The future, in more than one sense, may be sooner than we think. Operating rooms of the future may function a little more proficiently because smart medical devices may be doing some of the work, helping doctors improve their ability to treat patients. Hermes, record. Recording. Simple spoken voice commands are used to perform direct control over these devices. Surgeons can now speak to the future with new meaning in the message as we take you inside the OR. This is OR Behind the Mask. In today's operating rooms, surgeons are only permitted to touch the sterile surfaces located on and around the patient. As a result, the surgeon is forced to rely on the OR staff to set up, adjust, and determine the status of the medical devices, such as endoscopic camera and light sources, insufflator, arthroscopic shaver, and VCR. The Hermes Control Center is the world's first FDA-cleared system capable of networking medical equipment in the OR, allowing the surgeon to directly control medical devices. The Hermes system is the result of a co-development project between Stryker Endoscopy and Computer Motion. About two years ago, we approached Computer Motion and said, why don't we marry our abilities in video systems for endoscopy and minimally invasive surgery with your capabilities in voice activation. And therein started the Hermes program. This system of the future is being implemented today at Celebration Health, a new addition to the Florida hospital system, located on a 65-acre campus in Celebration, Florida. Brian Donaldley came to Celebration Health and will be one of the first patients to undergo surgery assisted by the Hermes voice activated system. In coming to Celebration, uh, the nervousness I had has been replaced by fascination. Uh, I was very scared uh, because this was all unknown to me, but everyone here has been um, um, pleasant so far in talking to me, uh, explaining, going out of their way to me in detail, explaining to me um, what I'm going to be going through. One of the unique things about Celebration Health is in coming into it, uh, it didn't have a hospital feel, it didn't have a hospital smell, uh, didn't have a hospital look. I felt like I was coming into uh, an upscale hotel. Having grown up, been a child of, you know, born in the 50s, grew up in the 60s, early 70s, uh, watching things like Star Trek, um, Star Wars, things like that. And now they, when they took me in there to see this, seeing what Hermes does is, to me, is like Star Trek medicine. That's where my fascination comes in because that, that it is the cutting edge of where we are and it's gonna make my arm better. Um, but I'm one of the people that's fortunate enough to have this done on them first, and, and that's really cool to me. Brian's surgery will be performed by Dr. Robert Palumbo, Director of Sports Medicine and Arthroscopic Surgery at Celebration Health. Brian came to me with a problem with his, with his right shoulder. He had injured it at work, um, and he had been dealing with it for several weeks before he really needed uh, to come in and be evaluated. Um, he had a deep pain. Um, at the, whenever he lifted his head or tried to reach around his back. It's actually how it occurred. He actually fell back on his arm and as he came down, he uh, basically ex hyperextended his shoulder. After my evaluation, it uh, became somewhat obvious that he had something actually going inside the joint itself. An MRI evaluation uh, revealed what's called a slap lesion of the shoulder. And what a slap lesion is, is where the biceps tendon, which is the tendon of the muscle that's in front of your arm, uh, the biceps tendon originates actually in the shoulder joint itself. Um, this, the area where it, is, where it originates from actually gets pulled off during the slap lesion. Uh, and that causes a lot of pain and can get caught in the joint itself. So what you need to do is, is repair that back to where it had gotten pulled off of. Basically, the first thing I'm going to do with Brian, once he's asleep, is examine his shoulder under anesthesia. It gives you a lot more information. I can see if his shoulder is actually loose. If I'm actually able to move the shoulder joint out of position, almost dislocate it, I can see what kind of motion he has. And sometimes I could feel 
whether there is some tissue or, or, or um, a piece of cartilage that's grinding in the shoulder as well that's helpful in doing that test as well when he's under anesthesia. Hermes, VCR, record. Recording. Uh, what we're looking at now is the front of the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint. You see all this fraying here is not normal. This is where the rotator cuff goes right into the head uh, of the, I got it, right into the head of the, uh, um, of the, of the uh, shoulder joint of the humerus. What I'm doing now is uh, putting a shaver. It's kind of like a vacuum cleaner and cutter and biter. And you're going to see once we start, you're going to start seeing this clearing up a little bit because what it does is kind of helps drain out some of the blood and etc. This is the fraying that we're talking about on the front of what's called the labrum. And there you see how this is just raised up off where it should be. When I'm showing, okay, now again, to orient us again, here's biceps tendon. Okay, biceps tendon going into the superior aspect, the top aspect of the glenohumeral joint. And it is just frayed and elevated off this area. And what I'm going to do is prepare this bone right over here and then insert a insert a basically a, a tack to hold this whole area back in this place. Shaver again. And you're going to see the tack sliding over the guide wire. And there it is. Okay. And then we're going to And pack that into bone in a second. And there it is. Is that bicep anchor is solidly placed back where it's supposed to be? Hermes control pointer picture. And that's basically it. I am going to take one more view from the front. Now this is a bioabsorbable tack. This will, this, the, the body will absorb um, in about, it would start to break down about 8 to 12 weeks. In fact, I have to warn all my patients that about that time, sometimes this head, you know, they'll feel a pop, and that's just this head that has been dissolved um, will start coming off. Um, but that's the beauty of it. It's not going to be there um, in another year. And this, this tack, again, just looking at here, that tack is going to hold the, the anchor, or, it, or where the biceps actually attaches, hold it in place until it has a chance to heal. And again, this will be intact for about, for about eight weeks. So that will give that a chance to heal. Obviously, we'll protect this guy's arm in a sling um, uh, for, again, about four weeks and then um, protect how much he's going to use his biceps um, for about two months uh, to three months. Um, but otherwise, I think he should do fairly well. Normally, uh, people recover fairly well from this. Um, it does hold them up for the first four weeks. I'm very conservative of how much I allow him to use his biceps motion. In other words, I'll, I'll have him passively move his arm up and down. But generally, I won't let him start lifting objects for about four weeks. And then it will be about another four to eight weeks before I really let him start lifting heavy objects with that arm. Uh, you don't want to put tension on, on the area where you just repaired, so you have to be somewhat careful for the first two months. Brian Donnelly is now recovering after a successful operation. Well, it's my hope that robotics never replace surgeons. Um, and, and, and really what I see is it really assisting a surgeon, making him more efficient, uh, and making uh, the procedures actually more easy for him to do, and hopefully more cost effective. If you can replace a person or, or cut down the amount of, uh, of people you need or require for the surgery itself, that's a cost savings as well.